I want to welcome all of you to Women for Women's third virtual learning session. As Erin said, I'm Deborah Berman. I am a member of the steering committee for Women for Women, and I served as chair of the grant committee for this past 2020 grant session. Um, I want to thank all of you who have been continuing their support for the Women for Women Giving Circle. The mission at the Community Foundation is to connect people who care with causes that matter. And a giving circle like Women for Women is an ideal vehicle for making that work happen. By joining together, we have granted more than $375,000 to local nonprofits that are helping some of our community's most vulnerable women and children lead more stable lives through essential interventions and education. By pooling and leveraging our resources, we at Women for Women are building a permanent fund to ensure that critical issues facing women and children in our community will be addressed forever. Each member's annual con contribution is so important to sustaining and growing the Women's Fund. Our annual grant amount is determined by two factors. One is the annual members memberships dues that we pay and of those dues, 25% of that contribution immediately goes out in grants that year, combined with an additional amount, which is approximately four or 5% of the endowment for the Women's Fund, which is, and that endowment is held at the Community Foundation for the Land of Lincoln. The total amount that we will have available for grant making in 2021 will be determined in December. The sooner people join, the more we can plan to give away. In fact, if just four more people make their annual membership contribution today, we will be able immediately to increase our next grant by $1,000. I'd also like to rec recognize my fellow grant committee members, many of whom are here today, Ann Burton, Jennifer Isringhausen, Diane Newell, Karen Reinke, Mary Beth Stevens, Susan White, and Lisa Wichterman. I'm very grateful to all of you. It is a tremendous task that we undertake and you all undertook it under somewhat complicated circumstances this year with cheerfulness and seriousness. So thank you all. This year, the Enos Park Neighborhood Association, Neighborhood Improvement Association received a $52,500 grant in 2020 with the potential for two additional years of funding to support their new program, the Creative Reuse Marketplace. This program creates a place where upcycled post-consumer materials can be redistributed or sold locally. In addition, the program works with inner city mission to employ homeless and low income women to create steady employment and build job skills so these women can re-enter the workforce. Now, I'm very pleased to welcome our representative from the local nonprofit organization that received this grant from the Women's Grant. Adina Richard Rivas is the City of Springfield's Manager of Waste and Recycling. She saw how the coordination between her background expertise in environmental policy and sustainability the passion from Enos Park Neighborhood Improvement Association and the service of Inner City Mission could come together to deliver this new program. Please welcome Adina. Hey everyone. Thank you, Deborah, so much for the introduction and thank you so much for those that were on the, the grant uh, sitting committee and literally awarded us this grant. It has made a slew of difference in the life of one woman so far. Um, and so right now I'm going to give you a short presentation. Deborah did actually really a great job of just kind of explaining what it's all about. <laughs> so hopefully this will give you a little more. I had a little issues earlier, but I think I worked it out. Okay, so... Getting there, y'all. It's, ah, where'd it go? Sorry, that's not the one. The reading, yeah, the work? That looks great. Okay, good deal. 
Okay, so the creative reuse marketplace, as Deborah was saying, um, my background, I manage the waste and recycling division for the city of Springfield. I'm fairly new to Springfield, about five years, but ever since coming up here, I was from the East Coast originally, and I loved going into these stores on the East Coast that were kind of like like knickknacks and trinkets and things like that. Basically, the things that you really know that there's no other waste stream, like your curbside recycling and other stores throughout the town won't take, but you know it's made out of something, you don't want to throw it away. It goes to these type spots. So if anyone's been to the Idea store in Urbana, that, that's basically the uh, format they were kind of going off of. So it's to clean up the waste stream to kind of close the loop a little bit on waste and, and came up with this creative reuse marketplace here for Springfield with a twist, um, obviously, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. So the creative reuse marketplace is fully literally made possible through the grant funding from the Women for Women Fund. So I can't thank you guys enough. Um, here is a little bit of some of the stuff that we actually take. We've divided things into categories to make it easy so that people can actually donate. So you have art studio, craft stash, living room, office, garage, um, eight categories. And you can see some of the stuff that we take. It's like tiny little things. And oftentimes people would throw that stuff away or it end up in the garbage. It's just you're cleaning out and you're like, oh, there's so much junk, right? And it's a lot of stuff that gets thrown away um, by the end of the year. So our whole mission um, in general is to be a community donation and recycling center with really focus on community development. And we do that through the job training program, education eventually, which will be through kind of hands-on workshops. That doesn't work very well with COVID right now, <laughs> um, but eventually it will. And then uh, waste reduction. So I am an artist. This is an example of some of my art. The one on the right, the squirrel isn't finished yet. I'm working on it, but the cat, it's huge. It's a huge, huge piece. It's it's made out of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of small little plastics and other tiny parts and pieces that would have made it to the landfill otherwise, right? So when you think of the creative reuse marketplace, think of a place for teachers, students, crafters, hobbyists. It's also a way for when we take stuff in that we know that we won't take is to donate it to other places and, and vice versa. Uh, like Habitat, they get a lot of things and a lot of stuff they'll get that they can't take, they end up throwing it away. But if they know that we take it, then it closes that loop, right? So it keeps the stuff out of the landfill in general. But literally what sets us apart is our workforce development program. And this is why the Women for Women Fund was very important. It's the idea of empowering women, giving them a, a leg up, and really kind of focusing in on those um, – those skill sets. So hard skill sets, soft skill sets. I've talked to many women that are in disadvantaged positions and they got there from one form or another and their resumes are lacking. And so their ability to go out into the workforce is very difficult as far as getting a job that will really pay bills. Um, so there's all kinds of, of different issues that women face all the time. And the workforce development program is a way to give them uh, a leg up in some form or fashion and to give them the, the self-esteem that they can do it. You know, they can learn and in a really fun, creative environment. And so pushing that all together, this is the coalition um, that was created before we actually put in for the grants, literally created quite a, a strong foundation with Enos Park being kind of the umbrella, right? Uh, they oversee the grant itself. And then underneath Enos Park is the advisory council. And that's made up of the Springfield Area Arts Council, Inner City Mission, Third Presbyterian Church, Sustainable Springfield, and the City of Springfield, which would be my position. Out of that, you have a project manager, manager which currently is myself. And then I report directly to EPNIA, um, which would be Enos Park, uh, Improvement Neighborhood, Neighborhood Improvement Association. So outside of that, um, the kind of leading to the advisory council are the two paid positions that right now we're a little behind on employment, but we'll have a manager and an administrator. The administrator does all the background stuff for a website, social media. The manager will actually be managing the physical store as well as any of our workforce development staff that's working. And then everything basically flows into the creative reuse marketplace. So that's the makeup of it. It's a strong coalition um, and many of people that are a strong part of it. So COVID related issues that we've had since we've been awarded the grant, <clears throat> one of the main setbacks is obviously when coronavirus hit, our whole plan was to go straight for a permanent site. 
well, um, you can't really go to a permanent site and look at all this stuff and touch everything and, and what have you. So we really had to kind of reevaluate the priorities. And so we went online fully first, and then we put the brick and mortar a little set back. So we went online, we had to really then look at online servers, what is our host going to be, and then really look at design, right? Like trying to look at pricing and pricing that out as far as how much it costs to actually get a web designer, do all these different things. Uh, we had hiring delays because of going fully online and because of having to get all the T's, you know, crossed and I's dotted in that sense. So we still have yet to hire our, our, our two part-time employees, but we're in the process right now of looking through applications and doing callbacks and interviews. So hopefully by the end of the month, we'll have that going. We had also accounting delays, uh, trying to get into the bank and actually set up the CRM's bank account. So that set us back as far as moving things forward in a monetary way and, and spending the grant money, right? Um, we had to think of obviously all types of different safety protocols and write that into uh, both our online and, and our store and our drop off and temporary drop off, whatever it may be. But because of COVID, it's not all negative. We had a few different advancements. One is that now we have a fully functional website. It is good to go. The store is up and running. We can sell stuff through online. We can set appointments for drop off, uh, appointments for volunteer and appointments for pickups. And it's all fully automated. And I'll, I'll show you that at the very end of the presentation. We also were able to start our workforce development program earlier. Um, so I'll tell you her story in just a second. And we also were able to move forward on our second year hiring. So instead of for the first year, just hiring two people part-time, we're looking towards hiring two workforce development people from inner city missions or from um, underserved populations, and then also having our two part-time employees. So that's because of the hiring delay. <clears throat> so there's some positives to the, the COVID. Um, I always have to have silver lining. The non-COVID related issues that we faced actually since April is that we had uh, major building and zoning issues with the area that was supposed to be a permanent location, which is Third Presbyterian Church. And because of those building issues, it can no longer be our permanent site. So now we've been looking and searching for a permanent location. Um, it's been difficult during COVID time to actually find locations and to reach people. Um, and then because of all of that, we had to look at more temporary solution to get things up and going and running, right? And get things going. So Third Presbyterian, although it couldn't be our permanent site, it became our temporary drop-off site. And we've been able to work out a temporary office site as well. So to have, once we have our two uh, paid part-time employees, they'll be working in just kind of like a little office space there. So utilizing the internet. And then we also have a temporary storage facility and I'll explain that in a second. And then um, we're also trying to look at other locations. So we're trying to troubleshoot that whole thing. Now here's some tracking in the progress. We've done a lot actually since April in trying to reevaluate and make things work and moving forward. This is really small. I know I'm very sorry, <laughs> um, but hopefully you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint and you kind of zoom in and look at the stuff, but it kind of tracks our progress through 2020. So we have our main benchmarks, which were our main things to just get everything up and running off the ground. I mean, this is starting from ground zero and building this whole thing from scratch. Um, and we literally have gotten to the point now where we're a little actual past some of our deadlines and some of this stuff and we're in progress which would be the blue where started it. And then you can see some of the green is going into the second year, into the third year funding, um, if we're so awarded, which cross my fingers. <laughs> Anyways, uh, right now we're literally to the point where we're doing more of the stuff of kind of policies and training materials, getting ready for the actual permanent store. And it might not be if we have a resurgence, obviously in the winter right now, obviously all our numbers with COVID is going up. So having people in a physical store might not be appealing, but in a second you'll see why we want a permanent location because of our temporary drop off is going to get quite nasty here in a couple months when it gets really cold. Um, but for right now, it's working. So tracking progress, we also have, again, employment opportunities. These are the two positions. Uh, and we have two applications for the manager and about four uh, applications for the administrator that we accepted to actually call back. We got a few more, but they were unacceptable. All women, by the way. <laughs> so our temporary drop-off location, this is what it looks like. So if you, if you go over here, this is Enos Park. Um, sorry, this is Inner City Mission. And this is a garage. 
So it's basically outside of their building. The board of, Inter of Third Presbyterian was willing to let us utilize that space, which is wonderful. It's great. It's allowed us to actually start it and get some like feed stocking, get some donations in, right? So as you can see though, um, this is an outside location. As it starts to get cold, this gets pretty nasty to, to sit in there um, and you know you kind of freeze a little bit. We have some radiators and things like that, but it gets pretty cold. So this is why we want a permanent site. But for right now, people drive in there. Um, you can kind of drive up and park over here. You donate by basically getting out. There's all of these bins and they're separated into those categories of office, living room, kitchen, craft stash, art studio, stuff like that. So people put stuff into the bin. Uh, this is our first worker for the workforce development. Her name is Michelle Pop. She li actually lives at Inner City Mission. And she's been working there since October. So she is literally our drop-off coordinator. Um, and she's loving her job right now. She, If she's not getting uh, drop-offs and sorting them, she gets to be crafty and make stuff. So it's actually a lot of fun. And she's learning quite a few different skills at the same time. Here's our temporary storage unit and how the temporary storage unit works is that we can't have a ton of stuff at the, at the third Presbyterian. So the, the agreement is that it would be a drop off and then we would move stuff from third press to a storage unit. And eventually the idea is to have everything in one location at our permanent site. So the storage unit is very well organized. I'm a Virgo. Um, <laughs> so I'm all about organization. You have all the same bins that are sorted by their categories, so attic, garage, craft stash. And if you look at that one picture in the upper right, you can see there's tape colored, right? So people weigh these pictures right in the middle here. Can you see my little cursor that's moving? Okay, so these, these two pictures here show a scaling system. So not only are we tracking people that actually drop the stuff off, we're weighing everything that comes in. So then we have an idea. There are some stuff we have to throw away. It's just garbage, right? And we know we're going to get garbage in. And some is just straight recycling. Like no one's going to buy that. We, you know, that's not stuff we're looking for. So we'll throw it away or recycle it. We don't weigh that. But it's very important to take the measurement of how much we're taking in to actually see, oh, wait a second. You know, we threw some stuff away. But by this month alone, in two weeks, we literally took over 100 pounds of different knickknacks and other stuff, right? So it's important that we keep that and track that as far as how much we're diverting. And then as you can see, the storage unit is very long. It's a 12 by 40. Uh, so we have plenty of space to actually social distance and have a couple people in there, you know, helping to sort and to um, kind of mark everything up. So if you look at this one picture here, these are all the items that have already pre-sorted and packaged and actually on the online webpage to be sold already. So when someone makes a purchase, they then make an appointment to do a pickup and then we go to the storage unit and pick up what it is that they purchased and then we'll have that ready for them for pickup. So we've had to really uh, revamp and rethink how we actually do this, but the storage unit for right now is working out uh, again as the winter months come in. It's a storage unit unheated. So <laughs> A permanent site is definitely someplace we want to get sooner rather than later. But our plan is, is that regardless of the fact, uh, by revamping everything, is to have our full front, you know, storefront open up by the spring of 21. So here is, I've been talking about it, this is the fully automated website. Hopefully it'll work. So Creative Reuse Marketplace. This logo, by the way, was made by the Springfield Area Arts Association. Springfield Arts Association, very, very awesome. Um, so very much appreciated on that. This website literally goes through um, not only COVID and how to actually, uh, the standards and everything, we have all that up there, but it goes through all these different things kind of telling you who we are about us. So one of the biggest things here is that this is between dreams and reality is action, is that people don't just stop about thinking, they have to actually put it into action and then they can make stuff happen, right? So that's kind of like uh, our standpoint, we kind of stand by that. So it kind of goes through all these different things, donate, contact. Here's all of our partnerships, you know, the different people that obviously Women for Women is huge, Community Foundation is huge, and then the other partners that are with us or other people that have helped us along the way, like Fry Williamson, they, they donated a lot of printed material, which I'll show you in a second. Um, if you go to the About Us, it says Meet Our Team. So here is the Advisory Council. Um, we have everyone who's actually part of that and has a little story. And then our workforce development program, this is Michelle Pop. So it has a little tiny part. She actually gave me a little bio. I haven't had a chance to kind of edit it and put it up there, but she is our first worker. 
and everyone that works through the workforce development program will actually be put up online so you'll get to see like all of the women that kind of move through the program and the idea is that they don't necessarily stay at the creative reuse marketplace that they get enough skills to move on right and and to get you know more formal type careers and things like that so the website itself is very very in-depth it talks about all kinds of things and, and how we do it there's a lot of things that link to one thing to another how you actually donate we have examples we have all the categories and then we have the categories even full uh, broken down if you go the full list and then ready to donate and then are you still unsure I love my cats so there you go there's my kitty the things that we don't take honestly I would love for you guys to just play around this website it's a lot of fun here's the appointment part and this is kind of one of our, our backbones here is we really um, try to ex you know express how important it is that they actually register to do their drop-off their pickup or their volunteer. So the volunteer is our slots. You can only have two volunteers at one time. That's our social distancing at the drop-off site. The pickup registration, they can you know, do that whenever, but the pickup and the donation is the same. So the schedule is Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And then if I was gonna click on Friday, you can see their 15 minute increments to drop stuff off. And so if you just click on that, like 12 o'clock, you know, book, really straightforward. You put your information in and that's it. You just, you know, confirm booking, you don't have to create an account or anything, made very simple, right? So it's a very straightforward, easy type of system. The marketplace is the store. So this is where we've done a lot of sorting of items so far, and we have stuff up there to be sold. So one of our big things is these handmade items. So part of the whole thing is not only to teach women skills, but to give something back to ICM, Inner City Mission. So these cards are all handmade by the women for Inner City Missions. And when someone buys the card, 80% of the sales goes back to ICM, 20% back to CRM to help for, you know, the maintaining of the website and stuff like that. So whenever we have handmade items, they'll go up into there. And most of them will actually be made by women for Inner City Missions. And it'll go back to, to that as far as helping the women there. But you can go through lot items, art studio. It just shows all the different items that we already have so far. And if you remember the storage unit, I showed you that racking system that had all the items kind of prepackaged. So organized. Um, and then we have some other things down here. You just click down, you can see the full donation guide. Donation guide looks like this. So it's a sheet of paper. Um, and we have like all of the stuff talks about the Women for Women Fund that it's made possible through the grant for the Women for Women Fund. And it kind of gives them the idea of how to drop their stuff off, all these guidelines. They can also download, I think I got the wrong one. I did, I got the wrong one. Oh wait, I got it as a PDF. Where's my PDF set? Uh, oh well. Forget it, I don't know where a PDF set. But point being, point being is you have all kinds of different things that you can actually download to help you as far as guide wise. When people donate and they drop stuff off, there are these cards that they fill out. So they fill out their information and then they check mark the box uh, as far as what they actually donated. It actually helps us keep a list of the people that actually drop stuff off. And for a thank you, they get a nice little sticker for the creative reuse marketplace. That's upside down. No, that's not upside down. There you go. <laughs> So to end this little part here, see if I can get to it, is a message actually from Michelle herself. She'd like to thank you guys. Can you hear that? Yeah, I think you have to maybe turn it up or unmute, yeah. It's like coming through, hold on a second. When you share the video, you need to click share computer sound as well. Or when you shared your screen, did you click the share sound? I think so. I, it's, it's coming actually out of the wrong speaker. So let's see if I turn these speakers up. Can you hear? Can you hear me when I'm speaking like this? Yes. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Okay, I'll turn it up. We, we can find a way to share that message too. I, 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 I didn't hear the audio come through, Adina, but we can find a way to 
share that message with everyone so they can hear it as well. And, well you didn't hear it? No, yeah, I, I don't think the audio uh, was coming through, but we can definitely find a way to make sure that, uh, <laughs> to share that video. <laughs> Yeah, it was coming through my computer speaker. Sorry, guys, I got like three computers going on. I've been trying to figure out how to make that work. So I think uh, we are ready for questions. But we also have Caleb on the line, who is from Inner City Missions. So if he has something to tell, and he can kind of give the Inner City Missions perspective of the whole Creative Views Marketplace as well. Sure. Um, yeah, let me first just say uh, we have been so thankful for Adina, who's really taken this. She's been at the helm of this project, uh, Betsy Dollar over at the Art Association, John Shear at Third Press, and myself. We've basically worked with Adina for quite a while now, but she's doing the vast majority of the work. All the creative stuff, all the beautiful things, that would not exist without Adina. So huge shout out to her. Uh, excellent leadership there. Um, yes, Michelle, uh, she just, she comes uh, back to the mission after working at the reuse and she's just bubbly, ecstatic. She loves it. And she's all about telling the other residents and has plans for roping other residents to come in and work. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. At the mission, um, we are constantly trying to help unwind trauma. There's a huge correlation with childhood trauma, especially, and homelessness, adult homelessness. Um, and so we are constantly looking at ways to unwind the toxicity in their emotional lives and their relational lives, that sort of thing. And so something like our work programs, like the Creative Reuse Marketplace, it provides a mechanism for us to see how people contrast with other environments, with other people, with healthy people, or perhaps other residents who might not be healthy and it gives us tangible insights into where there's toxicity in their emotional lives and then we take that and we follow it up with independent studies that we can work on with the residents when they are living here at the mission or um, conversations we do we have a wrap the vast majority of what we do at the mission is wrap around case management where we have a team of people looking at residents, making sure that we put a profi profile to them that is honoring to who they are, their unique selves, um, which involves personality profiling and assessments on gifts and um, strengths and weaknesses, that sort of thing. We are trying to help the person understand more of who they are. And something like creative reuse, these work programs, it gives a source of dignity to these ladies and a source of pride in work as they're developing the hard skills that they can then use to um, um, further advance their careers wherever they go beyond our place. So the main point is to help people find stability. The first step is helping unwind trauma uh, that they come through so that they can find future stability. But Adina, you knocked it out of the park. I appreciate all the things you've said. And um, I think we are good to take some questions. Well, great. Well, Adina and Caleb, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Uh, for the members, uh, there's a couple different ways to submit questions. Either um, in the chat function, it'll be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we actually have uh, one there already. Uh, or there's a, if you want to you know, have verbally, um, you know, there's a, a raise function, a raise hand function uh, that you can uh, hit at the bottom of your screen as well under the participants. Uh, and so yeah, we can go ahead and take questions. Uh, Susan White had a question about what kind of marketing you were doing to let people know that you're ready to receive donations and make sales. So we are uh, this Thursday actually, um, been working with the Illinois Times to get something that's a, a little more within our price range for advertisement. Uh, something that we're gonna do kind of, I think it's it's four to five advertisements within kind of like one of the first 10 pages or something, it's an ad, it's like that big or whatever. And we'll have about four or five of those in the Illinois Times. And then we have, we'll always have in the classifieds a tiny little blurb, but there, you know, when the, when the back of the newspaper, it'll always be in there for a year. So that's one of the main things that we're going to do for the newspaper. We have our social media, so we do have a Facebook page, and that's actually been getting a lot of traffic, which is nice. I am not a tweeter um, or any of those other social media platforms, so 
our big hope is the person that we actually hire as far as the administrator. That's the person that's really going to be the online person, the guru that's going to be overseeing the website. They're also going to be dealing with the social media and that they're going to be tech savvy in that sense. So hopefully they'll be able to really push us forward on that uh, part of it. And then the idea, obviously, um, we were talking about doing some posters and putting them in the downtown area. It's very difficult. I've been talking to other people like DSI and some other organizations and groups, and they really felt at this point in time it's not worth the cost to actually print that stuff out and how many people you would see. So we're definitely always open for ideas for the marketing side of it. Um, we have gotten, and I, I've done a couple radio spots talking about it, the city of Springfield through our communications department. If you are not actually on this, this is a really good thing to go. If you go to springfield.il.us, go to the residence tab and sign up for the neighborhood news. You don't have to be in a neighborhood association, but what it does every Friday, you get an email and it gives you information as far as what's going on in the city. And we've already gotten four shout outs in the newsletter uh, about the creative reuse marketplace. And so that's actually uh, created a big buzz. We've actually gotten people to reach out to us, including Miles or Mills uh, T-shirt printing company, and they're going. They're working right now on printing us some T-shirts and uh, hopefully some yard signs uh, for free, which is pretty awesome. So people are paying attention. Those are kind of the main things. Working on you know utilizing radio as much as we can. I'm hoping that as you know Channel 20 and other people hear about it, they'll also want to do stories and reach out. So. Great. Yeah. Lisa Stone uh, wanted to know how many clients are in your city mission and uh, for the workers with the Creative Reuse Marketplace, uh, if they get paid and if so, how much? Yeah, so I'll take the inner city mission part and then hand it over to Adina. Um, in normal times, we have um, 20 rooms available and those rooms we call units for families um, and general, in general, we'll average two to three persons per room. Uh, so in non-COVID years, we could have a maximum of between 40 to 45 people living with us. Uh, when COVID hit, we worked very closely with the health departments and with other shelters like Helping Hands to all come up with a safe, good policies. The first two months of COVID hitting was just craziness. We were all just trying to keep up with the daily changes in um, best practices uh, to keep our clients safe. So basically what we decided as a collective um, sheltering system here in Springfield was that most of our shelters were gonna go to 50% capacity. So throughout most of the summer, we have stayed at 50% capacity. And actually this month we are in the process of going to 75% capacity. So taking it from, we've, uh, we've had nine to 10 rooms full um, up till now and we're gonna take it up to 15. And then um, to speak up to like half of the question about how the pay works at the mission, um, when, when a person gets paid, we have a general system and it's structured to the individual client, but the general system is uh, we have them turn in their money and we force them to save 75% for the day they move out of the inner city mission. And then 25% they can use to pay bills or have as expendable cash, discretionary funds whatever the case may be. And so that's that's the general thing that we are doing. We like it when residents leave our premises. We are a year to a year and a half long program for them to build up a tiny little nest egg so that when they are leaving our premises, they're having some physical stability, hopefully combined with the emotional stability that we've been helping them create uh, during their time with us. But Adina, if you wanted to speak specifically about how the reuse marketplace pays, the work program so for the work program right now uh, Michelle has been working since October 9th and she gets $12 an hour she works 18 hours a week and we're going to be bumping that up to 24 hours a week if she's interested as well as hiring our manager and our uh, administrator the idea is to bump her hours up but we may have to bump down the 12 to 10 just so that we could get another workforce development person in there and then keep it around 10 period and then increment incrementally increase it so that the next year would be like 11 and then 12 for the workforce program but the idea is that the manager will make 15 an hour i know we were kind of going back and forth a little bit because right now the administrator is actually uh, just as important as the manager especially given covid and the online and they're kind of scheduled to do 12 dollars an hour 
they're both part-time so 12 at 20 for the administrator the manager would be 15 at 25 hours there's a question from Mary about she's interested in the types of items that you need um, you know, craft things but also things that can be sold as is are you interested in good lot holiday items. items or like lot items uh, yeah she said you know just uh, things that can be sold as is yeah, so some of the stuff, we do have a couple lot items. Um, one of them is like, the, the, I don't know, it's, it's big. It's like 11 by 15 or something. It's like a foil art thing. Like, you know, basically you can't make a mistake. You just color. Like, there's no coloring outside the lines. And we just got that. It was donated through the Art Association along with a, a lot of other stuff. But that can't be sold through a kit type thing. It's just kind of sold as is, right? So if there's, the way that I try to tell people to think about it is that if you can donate it to an actual thrift shop or like Habitat, or Salvation Army or Goodwill. Um, I know there's some issues with Goodwill right now with some stories that came out. If there's already an outlet for it, then donate it there, right? But if it's something um, that you know that they're not going to take or that maybe they have too much of it, then you can definitely donate to us. And if you ever have a question, you can just email. So we have the, it, it, so the, the email is always ending with the creative reuse marketplace dot org, all spelled out. So if you can email office at creative reuse marketplace dot org, or you can call. I got my cell phone attached to everything, so there you go. <laughs> Great. I think we have time for uh, one more question. If anyone else is interested, you can unmute or uh, type your question in the chat. Oh, my voice is coming through a little low. Hello. I have a, I have a question. Sure, um, go ahead. And if, um, I noticed in your presentation how you had bags of, say, crayons or this or that. Are you um, always, are you going to allow, say, teachers to come in and are, are, do you ever donate the items or are they all for sale? Yeah, so the plan is, is once we get like, uh, so right now we're, we're selling it so that we can get some revenue back, right? Um, so that we have some supplemental type, you know, money on hand that will hopefully supplement whatever grant funding we get next. But eventually the idea is what we'll have, honestly, once it really starts to hit, we'll get so many donations, we don't know what to do with, right? Um, but to have it at least once or twice a year where we have a teacher students day, where they literally come in and we'll have a, a ton of different, you know, items where they can choose and they can just choose what they want and take it. Right? There's no cost associated, but we'll also do stuff for community groups and organizations later on, like churches and things like that, that have programs that they don't have the funding to actually get the supplies for. And if they just reach out to us, you know, we'll, we'll bulk things together and, and give them kind of like craft bag box type stuff. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, well, great. Well, Adina and Caleb, thank you so much for the presentation and explaining so much about the, this program <laughs> that uh, Women for Women was able to help launch. Thank you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll have the, the website to so, uh, take, take you directly to their website you can, so you can see uh, you know, what donations uh, could be uh, made or, or how to volunteer or, or everything that comes with the Creative Reuse Marketplace. Um, so thank you both for, for presenting.